All right, well, why don't we get started? Welcome to today's webinar, The Best Pets for Older Adults. I'm your host, Janet Barker Evans, and today we're going to learn how a canine or feline friend can provide companionship for older adults. And Dr. Marty Becker, DBM, will speak to us about the breeds and types that are the best fit, the best fit for senior lifestyles. We're going to talk about common pet health issues to consider when choosing a new friend and so much more. And we're also going to be speaking with Janet Cheek, who's a sales director from Brickdale. So you may be joining us today on Zoom. And we're also simulcasting on Facebook Live. So before we introduce our speakers, let's take a minute to talk about how you can interact with us. And things can be different from one computer to the next. But if you're on Zoom, look at the bottom of the Zoom screen where you're seeing this webinar and you'll see some icons. The one on the far left is usually a microphone. Now we've muted your voice, so there's no background sound, but let me explain how you can ask questions or get technical help. The most important other buttons on the bottom are the ones that say Q&A and the one that says chat. When you click the Q&A button, a window will appear where you can type any question that you have for our Q&A session at the end. Feel free to start asking questions at any time during the presentation. We're gonna to get to as many as we can. The chat button opens a window where you can chat with our moderator. And if you're having technical difficulties, let us know in chat and our moderator will help you if they can. Now, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, it's even easier. Just pop any questions into the comments and our moderator will see them and add them to the queue. After the webinar today, you'll get all of this in a follow-up email with a recording and other information so you can refer to it later or share it with your friends and loved ones. Ready to go? All right. Let's jump in and meet our speakers, Dr. Marty Becker and Janet Cheek. So Dr. Marty Becker is known as America's veterinarian. He's the founder of Fear Free, which works to prevent and alleviate fear, anxiety, and stress in pets by inspiring and educating the people who care for them. This includes veterinary and other pet professionals, as well as pet parents, animal shelters and rescue group staff, volunteers, all through fearfreehappyhomes.com and fearfreeshelters.com. Fear Free and Dr. Becker partnered with Meredith Corporation, which is the nation's, the nation's largest brand powered food, lifestyle and entertainment media company to introduce Happy Paws Magazine. Happy Paws assists pet owners in providing their pets with the physical and the emotional care they need to live happier, healthier, and fuller lives. A passionate advocate for the human and animal bond, Dr. Becker practices at North Idaho Animal Hospital because he loves veterinary medicine, pets, and the people who care for them. Welcome, Dr. Becker. Thank you, dear friend. Hello. Also joining us today for our pet conversation is Janet Cheek. Janet's a sales director at the Gastonia Brookdale Network in North Carolina. Janet is married with three grown children and three golden retrievers. Her first golden retriever was acquired in 2009 when her youngest child, Lauren, was in a life-altering accident. During her recovery at their local children's hospital, she was motivated and comforted by a golden retriever therapy dog named Chance. So Janet and her husband told Lauren if she cooperated with the physical therapy team, they'd get her a dog just like Chance. So River, their English golden retriever became part of the family and River has become Janet's most popular work companion and loves all of his senior friends and associates at Brookdale Robinwood. So welcome, Janet. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. And River's with us today too, right? Absolutely. Hi, River. Hey, River. Come here. You want to go to work? Yeah. <laughs> River's got to work today. <laughs> We're going to first spend, oh, there's River. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, look at that sweet face. This is going to be a good one today with all these babies. Mm -hmm. We're going to first spend some time speaking with Dr. Becker about pets for older adults and why it's so beneficial. So Dr. Becker, we often hear about the healing power of pets. Can you explain why pets enhance our lives so much? First of all, thank you again for having me. As you can tell, I fit your target audience here, Asinas. I'm, if I was a dog, I'd be a gray beard. The ones with the old gray on the muzzle and the ja jaunted hip bones and you go, poor old thing. He's in the last <laughs> chapters of his life. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm, 
I'm so glad to be here. And, you know, one thing for sure, we know pets make us feel good. I mean, look at Janet when she gets River up in her lap. But I want to tell you, they're also good for us. And that's something many of us have experienced it. We've witnessed it. We've intuited it. But it's only like in the last 20 years that really science has really painted in the numbers of what these pets do for us. I wrote a book, came out one week before 9-11. So phenomenal award-winning book called The Healing Power of Pets that won awards, but didn't sell that well, as you might imagine, during 9-11. But it's still, still selling 20 years later, and it looks at the human-animal health connection of the healing power of pets. And in its simplest form, yes, it works to help children read. Yes, it works for children with autism. Yes, it works for PTSD. Yes, it helps uh, survivability of heart attacks, but it's that's the 18 pound doorbells, by the way. I'm America's veterinarian, not America's trainer. And uh, they, the, the simplest thing, when you have that pet in your lap and you're stroking that pet, in about 90 seconds, you get this massive release of positive biochemicals. You get oxytocin, the hug hormone. You get, you get prolactin, like a mother nursing a baby. And you get phenylotholamine, the active ingredient in chocolate. And guess what? The dog gets it too. Guess what? The cat gets it too. So it's reciprocity. There's a reason why only dogs and cats have broken down our hearts and homes in mass. Wow. It's great. So cat's too good to know is the cat lover in the room. <laughs> What can we do to harness the affection connection and have better relationships with our pets? Well, you, you don't get the healing power of pets seeing a dog outside the sliding glass door or passing mm -hmm. one on the street, or really, even if one comes to visit animal assisted therapy or animal, uh, animal assisted uh, activities, you have to have physical contact with them. So that simply can mean petting them on the head, having them nuzzle up against you. Don't forget dogs and cats, their average, their, their average temperature is about 101 and a half. So it's like a little furry hot water bottle. So between their temperature and the tactile part of their hair, any of your physical touch with them, even if you're just touching them, lowers blood pressure and causes a release of those positive biochemicals. So having them in our lap, Janet, you like having River? River must love being up in the lap. Oh, yeah. That's how I wind down at home. I get in the floor when I get home. It's great stress reliever. Yeah, it is stress relief, right? Like, and it's, and they're not mouthy like people. Like they don't, they don't <laughs> give you back talk. That's correct. So doctor, where should older adults start when it comes to adopting a pet? Like what are the most important factors for them to consider when going out there to find a pet? For God's sakes, don't get a puppy. I want to tell you, Really? No puppies? Well, I'm saying it tongue in cheek. Uh, okay. here, here's why, though. First of all, we romanticize puppies. The One of the greatest things about being a veterinarian is puppy breath. My God, I wish those little tree car fresheners came in puppy breath. Wouldn't that be awesome? But the, it's not true. Uh, uh, one dog year doesn't equal seven human years. So the first year of a dog's life, when River was a year old, he was equivalent of 18 human years, full adult size, sexually mature, but not mentally mature. Remember those <laughs> of us that had kids that went to college, uh, Janet, your adult kids and mine, every year thereafter is equivalent to three human years. So remember 18 years, that means they're going through the terrible twos and the teenage years in one year. And if you want the equivalent of a three-year-old with ADHD and a chainsaw running around your house, get yourself a puppy. But I would highly recommend a young adult dog somewhere between 15 to 25 pounds and have long hair. Now, the people are thinking, long hair? What? That's for, I don't want the dander. I don't want the allergies or I don't want all the hair. Long hair is genetically triggered to fall out less often. So you keep a long haired dog trim short. Why 20, 15 to 25 pounds? You can pick it up in an emergency. Mm -hmm. It's 10 more places with you. You you know you go to the your grandkids uh, baseball game and guess what you can have it in your lap in the stands and they eat less they go to the bathroom less it takes less medication it's less to boredom it just works out the best and by the way if you have a choice of darker light skin darker the darker the coat the better just for allergies oh really that's good to know so if somebody's considering okay yeah the dog is for me that's what I want. 
What are the Beauty. basic needs of a dog? And just if I'm cue barking. <laughs> okay, that's about it. There you go. There you go. My gosh, a river's gonna make a show on this is cutie pie. Hi, cutie pie. He's he's Dachshund Chihuahua Jack Russell cocktail. He's two dogs long and a half a dog tall. I guess I better put a cover up there. Cutie pie. That's awesome. Um, Hi, cutie pie. There's only one greatest pet in the world and every family has it, Janet. That's why Janet's showing off River. I'm showing off cutie pie. Those people are listening have the, have the greatest dog or cat in the world as well. Well, I would have told you years ago, it was food, water, shelter, and veterinary care. That is the basic needs, but that's not true any longer. Uh, I'm part of a group called Fear Free. And we know that pets have to have emotional well-being as well. This means you can't have a pet that is terrified of thunderstorms or fireworks or gunshots where I live in northern Idaho. Imagine a pet that has noise phobias living in the outskirts of Disneyland, which I'm working with somebody right now. And it's actually, it's actually very easy to treat. Uh, a dog that Things are going to die going to veterinarian. That's not okay. How would you like to be taken back over and over to a place where you literally felt like you're going to die? So for a cat, not food, water, shelter, veterinary care, also a place to climb, a place to scratch, and a place to hide. They have to have that. Those can all be done with a big cat tree. So dogs are predators. Cats are both prey and predator, a weird ecological niche. So they want to get up high to look for supper. They want to get up high to prevent being supper. Yeah, I had to kick my cat out of the room because he jumps here and then he likes to jump up there and knock everything down. They do. I, I learned that. I learned they like to jump and climb and scratch for sure. What are some of the most common health problems people need to be aware of with dogs and cats? Well, number one health problem, the people take pets to the vet, drum roll, kitty pie, uh, skin problems. And a majority of those are related to external parasites. So I don't think, I don't think, and some people go, well, it doesn't have many fleas or something. Have you ever been bitten by a bug and thought to yourself, well, that was fine. I don't mind. <laughs> Let them eat me alive, right? It hurts. And they get something called flea allergy dermatitis and ticks lead to Lyme disease and other things. And also mosquitoes. Mosquitoes carry heartworm. You want to use lifetime parasite control for all pets, regardless of geographic location. You know, Janet's in North Carolina, I believe. I live in Northern Idaho. Have, you know, I had 10 feet of snow here a few years ago. Still use parasite control. The newer products that you can get from your veterinarian, they literally kill everything but the dog and cat. I mean, they kill, they kill fleas, ticks, heartworms, mosquitoes, ear mites, roundworms, hookworms, whipworms, tapeworms, everything you can think of. Very safe to use. What's the number one thing we diagnose? Dental problems. 80% of dogs, uh, puppies at three months already have signs of periodontal disease. So are you going to brush your pet's teeth? No, you're not. Uh, in the veterinary profession, we recommend that yet only 5% of us do it. That's a really good recommendation when you know somebody's not going to do it. So what do you do? And I've covered this on Good Morning America and Rachel Ray and Martha Stewart and Dr. Oz, the same thing. The gold standard, if you can do it, is to brush your pet's teeth. If you start from when they're young, it's not that bad. Second is to put something in their water because they have to drink. And third, and this is what you're going to end up doing, is using something that's the equivalent of an edible toothbrush. Mm -hmm. So milk bone brushing chews that you see in the grocery store, greenies, they have the Veterinary Oral Health Care Council seal of approval. It means they're clinically proven. There's a new product called Bark Bright that mm -hmm. I think is a game changer. It that looks like a little asterisk. If you think of an asterisk, it's this long for a little dog and this long for a, a bigger dog. It has this patented gel. They think they're getting a treat. And what it does, it squeegees that plaque off of the teeth. Those are the two most common things. And, and how do you prevent the, the, the skin problems? Number one, parasite control monthly. And number two, you need to clean your house better. If you think of a dust mop or a Swiffer, that pet is a four-legged Swiffer or dust mop. It gets on them. It's absorbed through the skin. It's absorbed, it goes through the nose. And it ends up usually around six or seven. They explode in these allergies. And by the way, there's a product. I, I don't have a commercial relationship with these, so I'm not, I'm not a shrill. I'm not, uh, what's a guy with sham wow, you know, or, <laughs> or seal it, you know, watch this. I get in the truck. No, but wait. Now, there's a product called Apoquel, A-P-O-Q-U-E-L. It's made by a company called Zoetis. 
And you, if you have a dog that has scratched its whole life, you get a prescription of that from your vet and it's like turning off a light switch. They stop completely. Really? That little dog I held up a minute ago is on Apicol every day. Before it, scratch, 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 break the skin, infection, get it cleared up. Three months later, scratch, 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 break the skin, same thing. It's a, wow. it's a game changer. And so are you, what about like, I'm thinking like a cat that's indoors all the time or a dog that's indoors all the time, you still think that they need to have that um, the parasite prevention. And all yes, that, right? because, well, because they're, I hear this all the time. Number one, mosquitoes don't know there's an inside and outside. And number two, if you, if you take your dog places, uh, by the way, if you have a puppy, it's much worse to not get them socialized than it is the risk of getting distemper parvo. You don't want to be dumb. You don't want to go on the interstate and stop at a highway rest stop. <laughs> That's like a hot zone, right? I wouldn't go to the local dog park. Uh, but you want to get them socialized, but you can't, you cannot possibly keep you. I see these dogs going into Petco or PetSmart. Yeah. God, God, I'd hate to be a tree outside PetSmart. God, you remember that old, the movie, the, the band three dog night, that's Eskimos. It was so cold. They slept with three dogs. I can just imagine this poor tree. Oh God, why'd I get outside of PetSmart? God, this is hell. There's so many parasites there. You can't see them. They're invisible. Trust me, I'm trying to save you money. Yeah. To, and, and if you don't want to get it from the veterinarian, get a prescription, buy it on Chewy, buy it. I don't care where you buy it. You just want one that's veterinary recommended, though. It's that but, important. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's good to know. So, okay, I want to talk about pet treats. Does River get a lot of treats, Janet? River probably gets more treats at the community than my husband is aware of. <laughs> that's awesome. Right? Um, we love giving them treats. And, and um, we'll be interested to hear what Dr. Becker has to say, but we try not to give him any people food, uh, if you will. So um, don't know if that's right or wrong, but we do limit him. Now he's an 85 pound dog and he is motivated by food. So he'll do anything for me with food. I wish I'd have brought some treats in here so he'd sit in my lap, but uh, <laughs> he loves to eat. Yeah, Great. That, so, so yeah, what that, do we do and how do we pamper them if we aren't following that whole like motivated by food, food is love? What if, are some if, other if, options? If Janet came to me, you know what she'd tell me? He's not fat. He's just big boned. He's just fluffy. That's what he, I hear all the time. He's really not fat. He's just fluffy. <laughs> no, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I wrote another book here called Fitness Unleashed with a Robert Kushner from Northwestern University. I was really looking, the most successful exercise programs involve a dog because there's, you get, if, if let's say people at Brookdale decide to have a walking club or, mm -hmm. or you walk with your kids, it always peters out. Oh God, I'm tired. There's a, the, the Super Bowls on. My kid's got a soccer game and it, it always peters out. I've watched my wife and all these different activities. They're going to all ride together and that's gone. Well, guess what? That dog doesn't have a better offer comes along and they make your life a living hell if you don't get your ass off the floor and out the door at the appointed time. I talked to a guy that was a Marine drill instructor and he goes, God, I wish this dog would lay off me. I want to finish my iced tea. But uh, the dog would make him go out. When you walk with the dog, number one, you feel safer and you are safer. Number two, they're a conversation catalyst. You feel like you could explore different parts of town and you get to experience a natural world through them. So anyway, about what you want to do, if you can, is get a dog panting tired every day. And if you need to, if you're not able to for time or physical condition, there are so many people that would love to walk your dog for you for nothing. Do you have that something for, for them to do? Your treats ideally should not be more than 10% of their caloric intake. Now, sometimes if you have a, we have dogs that are the clinic dog and they too get a lot of treats, especially when fear freeze thing is to put the treat into treatment. Here's the key. You want to give, you want to give things that are, that are lower in calories, but dogs still love like little pieces of like this little dog over here loves slices of carrot. So mm. you just take, uh, take the, the carrots and just cut them up uh, in little tiny poker chip size things. A lot of dogs like blueberries, a lot of them like pieces of apple, but carrots, they love the crunch and they're sweet. The other thing you do in, in Fear Free, we've got to be careful with some dogs that don't get digestive upset. So what is the other thing we do? Physical touch. And every pet has a place 
that they love to be touched and not want to be touched. So for dogs in general, not on top of the head, you would think as we're used to seeing them pat a dog on top yeah. of the head or go right down their, their dorsal midline, down the yeah. top of their back. Those are places most dogs don't like to be touched. Side yeah. of the neck, side of the chest, base of the tail. And those are ones you can, uh, and if you're using a little scritch, you know, like you're using this and you're going like this on the side of here, oh my God, they love that on the sides and you go down the flank and to the base of the tail. And you see them with that silly, crazy grin that they have. Uh, so that's your, that's your substitute. And also- What about God, cats? What about cats? Do well, they like the top of the head? No, you know, also for Janet, by the way, a tennis ball, you get a dog, it's a retriever. That's all you have to have. Yeah. That dog's probably got two neurons connected to a tennis ball in his head anyway. Cats actually like it on the, under, the ba under the chin, the commissures of the lip. There's a hairless area above the eyes. It, it intersects like if I was going here, right there where that X is, there's, there's a spot right there. And if you take your thumb and go like this clockwise, and also the base of the tail and around the base of the ears too. The base, I've seen the base of the ears goes mm -hmm. crazy. It's crazy. You, you, but the stomach, Janet, if you want to get on uh, YouTube or TikTok with hieroglyphics on your face, um, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> You're exactly. Right. Yeah, you'll do it once. Yeah, but it'll it'll do really good on uh, on YouTube and stuff. So I'll look amazing. I'll get a lot of followers. <laughs> So you're talking about walking the dog and then they say a tired dog is a happy dog, which is great. What are ways to tire on a dog without walking miles a day? Oh God, you guys are going to love this. What I want you to do, Janet, I don't know what kind of budget you get, get a remote controlled car. And what you do is you tie, uh, you tie a toy on it <laughs> or you tie, if you want to really go funny, you tie a milk one on the back of it and you run the thing around the back of the property or this is my other favorite. There's there's a dog that's at at Brookdale. Sorry about that. And there's a dog at Brookdale, and it's it's supper time, or it's breakfast, or it's lunch. You're better, by the way, to split the meals up for a dog. You're mm -hmm. better to take what it's going to feed per day and split it into portions. You ready for this one, guys? You use a slingshot and you shoot the kibbles of food into the grass or in the gravel or out on the patty or on the, the concrete doesn't matter and they go one piece of kibble at a time to it's eat it's awesome that's awesome i never thought about that they're gonna run for their food yeah the, the, some people go well we we have not fed any of our pets we have horses cats dogs we have not fed any of the cats or dogs out of a food bowl in 15 years. We use all food puzzles or food dispensing devices. So they, they have to, you know, these dogs, you know, a lot of us used to watch Lassie. Remember, Timmy, get help, Lassie, get help. Yeah. Well, hell, Lassie's collapsed in front of the TV watching Animal Planet reruns now and fat as a whole hog. So they are born to hunt. And so by using food puzzles or food dispensing devices, of which there's a million of them at Chewy or on Amazon or in pet yeah. stores, yeah, you recreate the hunt. They literally recreate the hunt in the home. You know, I made a puzzle out of a shoebox for my cat mm -hmm. because he gets the zoomies and I just dump some stuff in there and it's amazing. He just gets so crazy going mm -hmm. in there trying to get it out. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to buy them. You can make your own. Mm -hmm. So, okay, if we think about a senior wanting to get a dog, what breeds are best for seniors? Are there certain breeds that are better than others? One, one thing, my, <clears throat> we just lost our, our mother-in-law, my mother-in-law uh, to COVID in May and she was 95 and she had, a, she'd do sleepovers like cutie pie here would do sleepovers with her. And one of the things you got to be careful of is dogs that trip you up. So there's a lot of falling issues. And I swear to God, she was like, she must have been made of rubber. Uh, she fell more times and uh, she'd always goes, I didn't really fall, I just sat down. Um, I saw her fall over like a tree was cut, you know, like if that's just sitting down, my God, I hate to see you fall. But she um, uh, was able to live in her home until she was 95. But, it, you know, they, they really do, a, it can be a tripping hazard. So you have to be careful about the kind of dog that's always under your feet. 
So in one way, Janet's kind of dog is good for some people because you can literally hold on to them. It's like assisted walking, you know, you can use them. But on the other hand, if you got a dog, you're out and you're trying to walk it and it sees errant squirrel and you try to hold on to it, it'll, it can jerk you right off your feet. So that's one of the reasons why I'm also in that 25 to 35 mm -hmm. pound range. I also think the thing is to not be afraid of having a shared pet. We have a, a dog that we rescued from, uh, I don't know how many of your, the people that are listening to this have been foster failures over the years. You, you know, my wife and I were down in Louisiana to rescue. We've been married 43 years. We shook hands for God's sakes. Let's don't adopt anything today. We already had six dogs. We live in Idaho. Okay, well, I want to adopt some Catahoulas right off the start. Nah, and then she wanted to adopt something. Nah, the second to last dog was a pit bull that was starved to death. I, I had never in my life seen a dog that skinny. The dog, by the way, it's, it was as full adult size, weighs 84 pounds now, solid muscle. It weighed 20 pounds. That's oh. how thin it was. Oh. But the dog would bite its own reflection. It was fear-based aggression. So a year later, after created a heartworm, worked with board of behaviorists, this pooch pacifist ended up, uh, it needed to be a one, a one dog household. Yeah. And these people adopted it. It lives somewhere, I think, in North Carolina, Janet, North or South Carolina, for sure. And the whole family has this dog. They say, hey, can I have the dog uh, Friday night? Oh, that's and then, great. And then I'll get, bring it over to you Sunday. And so they literally, they share a dog. And I think that's something now that's, uh, that should be looked at. That's interesting. Yeah, by the way, speaking of uh, biting itself or whatever, what is proper etiquette to avoid getting bit by a dog? Oh, yeah. And like, if you have a dog and you have grandkids or something, like, how do you teach them how to approach a dog that you don't know? Janet, I'm going to tell you a statistic that'll just shock the living something out of you. You ready? State Farm, the largest property home property casualty insurer in the globe, the last three years running. Their largest category of claims as dollar amount paid out is not hurricanes. It is not car accidents. It is not California wildfires adding to it. It is dog bites. Three years running. And really? this, they're not alone. Go to Liberty Mutual and, and, and uh, uh, Safeco and all the other ones. Again, the dog bites are a huge problem. One out of two children are bitten by the age of 12. Everybody knows you catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll. Are you really worried about your grandkids or your nephews or nieces or great grandkids catching on fire? Uh, I don't think so. Dog bites? Ooh, be careful. Yeah. Okay, why are they bitten? They do three things wrong. Number one, they interrupt a pet when it's eating or with a toy or a bone. Things of high value. Number two, they wake them up from a nap they come over uh three they'll grab them someplace that's painful like they may have they may have arthritis or something and they'll touch that thing so i guess i forgot there's number four big giant eyes and they go right down there and stare at them with direct eye contact so here's how here's what you're supposed to do when you see a pet don't don't walk up to them and put oh can i what's your what's the dog's name can i pet it with your fist out you're doing three things wrong one you're looming two direct eye contact three you're putting something right in their face the dog has smelled you before it even saw you that's how good their sense of smell is so what you do is you actually turn sideways uh if you can't kneel down which i have a hard time now i just crouch down a little bit pat my leg and you know even if you don't know its name come here come here buddy come here they like a little high pitch thing and see if you can get them to come over to you and and by the way if you're I met an elderly lady in Hawaii not that long ago. She was on the beach. Her dog was extremely uh, aggressive, territorial around her, protective. It would lunge at you when you walk by on the beach. She was on the far end of the beach because she felt embarrassed. A uh, little dachshund puppy said she told her, she said if she got rid of her husband, she'd give the pup dachshund puppy. So she got rid of her husband and caught a dachshund puppy. And, uh, when I was coming back, I felt, I say, hey, you ought to go to Fear Free Happy Homes. Uh, there's some really good stuff that'll help you there. I don't want to interrupt your vacation, but you know it'll help you. And she goes, oh, please interrupt. Tell me what to do. I said, well, your dog just being very protective of you and it's territorial. And I said, wait here, had my wife wait. I went to a beach shack. I got some chicken and I stood, I got about hundred yards from her and the, I asked people to approach this dog 
turn sideways, throw a little piece of uh, barbecue chicken to it. I see her at the pool the next day. Now she's got a problem. She can't get the dog to stay with her. It wants to run off and see everybody because they have chicken. Sometimes it's literally that simple that their right. friend, not foe. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so for those of you that want to ask some questions, drop them in the Q&A. I see a couple of people already have Drop those in. We're going to get to those at the end. Um, so any questions you have about anything we've talked about or questions we haven't answered, please drop those in. We're going to talk with Janet for a minute about how pets fit into the senior lifestyle at Brookdale. And so first of all, Janet, I want to know what Brookdale's policy is on pet ownership. Obviously, you have River with you there today. Yeah, so we encourage pet ownership for sure. Um, you know, a lot of folks do have pets. Older folks do have pets. We do have a pet policy. We prefer that they be 25 pounds or less. Um, our preference would also be that they can take care of them themselves, walk them, feed them, uh, those type things. But in the event that they can't, we also provide services to do that. So, um, you know, th they're family. I, I don't know any other way to put it. Um, you know, I have three dogs and I have three children, but my three children know how I feel about my three dogs. So... <laughs> I was um, just going to say there's a hierarchy there and I don't think the kids are on top all the time. Well, there's a story about that, but, um, so anyway, uh, but we do encourage them to bring their pets, um, in the building with them and That's we have to do. And how have you seen pets affect the lives of older adults in the Brookdale community? It's almost magical. Um, if you can imagine, how people react when they see a toddler or a baby enter a communal place like this and everybody wants to touch it. Um, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I had young children, I'm still a germaphobe, which is hard to believe. And I know Dr. Becker's probably saying, uh, right, with three dogs and as much dog hair as you have at your house. <laughs> But I am a germaphobe. I would have probably given my small children a bath and hand sanitizer when they left a place like this. So, um, but when River walks in, it is, it's just magical. I mean, people that are introverted and don't normally speak or interact with a lot of their um, peers here want to touch him and they want to pet him and they call his name. They all know his name. Um, and the reaction from him is priceless as well. I mean, he's just as excited. You think about touching a baby, a baby, you know, mom's not going to want you to touch it, but does a baby really want you to touch it? He can't wait for somebody to touch him. Yeah. So, awesome. I, and I love the point about people that might be more introverted, especially maybe even new to a community. I know, I know Father Dr. Becker had said a, a little bit ago too that like you go walk a dog or something and everybody wants to come up and pet it, right? It's like, it is the door opener. It's a conversation starter. It's a great way to attract people to you and kind of have conversations. So I think that's kind of cool too. Janet, can, uh, I, can I add a little bit to that? Yeah. I, I, I've witnessed quite a few things when I was writing the, the Healing Power of Pets. And one thing I noticed is people, like I grew up rural. And if you grow up around cattle and horses and sheep and things, sometimes there's a, there's a connection there that's different than with dogs and cats. And so I've seen people that didn't respond to dogs and cats that responded to a miniature horse uh, or, or responded to uh, a sheep or a goat uh, or uh, the one place that used um, kangaroos. And uh, the, a baby kangaroo, a little Joey coming in was like, there was one that's like, now that's something different, <laughs> you know? Uh, but I, I really think it's our connection, you know, the Eden hypothesis about, you know, we get disconnected from the natural world. And that's why in medical facilities, some places having tropical fish and having plants and having yeah. animals uh, reconnects us. And I think a lot of times it's the animals that make us human again. Yeah, that's a really good point. And by the way, Janet, I'm not a germaphobe. That dog that I held up there, number one, it, we live on a horse ranch. It had a green grin a minute ago, if you know what I mean. We were up at the crowd. Uh, 
and he uses his tongue as toilet paper and I still let him kiss me fully on the mouth. So I am definitely not a germaphobe. I don't think there's a vet in the world that can be a germaphobe. No. I don't think you could, they're incongruous. Yeah. <laughs> I love them, but not that much. Yeah, no, like, like there's a limit. There's a limit. Hey, Janet, if what about Brookdale residents who aren't comfortable taking on that responsibility of owning a pet, right? Like, I love pets. I really want to own one. I'm not sure I could take care of it. Are there still, still other opportunities for them to get that animal interaction? Oh, absolutely. So we have several um, folks that have pets here, cats and, and dogs alike. Um, again, I bring River probably at least three days a week, but there are other networks of people that go to, um, you know, if you check with the children's hospital in your area, they have a child life department and they will know everyone in the area who comes and does pet therapy and they will be glad a lot of them go to assisted living and nursing homes and, and all those places to, um, to do that. That's great. That's great. I've got a new resident that just moved in um, and his daughter went to the beach today and he loves dogs and he's kind of lit up. He's been pretty sick. Uh, he's in a new environment, but as soon as we get through with this, we're going to go by and visit him. That's great. That's great. So we have a ton of questions too that are coming in and I'm seeing these questions and I'm like, we better get to those. Um, but before we do that, um, and, and any other questions anyone else has, pop them in the Q&A. But I wanna pull up the slide for the folks that want to be able to follow Dr. Becker on social. So if our friends behind the scenes can pop up our slide for us so you can see uh, where you can find him. And are there any other sources of pet care information that you recommend, doctor? By the way, Janet, you're doing a great job. Uh, I do, I've done a number of these over the years. I just love, love your energy. Uh, look, look, at, look at this picture of here. With the, at Fear Free, we use baby blankets. We use fleece. I'm wearing pheromones. One thing, by the way, pheromones are really something people should look at if you have a pet. There's mm -hmm. one called Adaptal and one called Feel Away. The Adaptal is a synthetic version of the, I can say bitch on this one, Janet, because that's a female dog. All right, bitch, bitch, bitch. That's a lot. Uh, the, the female dog whelps, has puppies, and they've got, you know, breasts going down the other side, right down the midline where your buttons would be on your shirt. Yeah. Are these glands that secrete something called dog appeasing pheromone. Uh, I know Golden Corral shut down because of COVID. <laughs> I can't overeat now at Golden Corral. But um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, that's like Golden Corral for a predator. Imagine a bitch laying there with eight puppies hooked onto her. So what did Mother Nature do? Oh, we got to keep these puppies quiet. How are we going to do it? We're going to have this pheromone. That mm -hmm. works throughout a pet's adult life. When mm -hmm. I take this stethoscope and I practice, I clean it off with a product called Rescue and I wipe back across with Adaptal, that dog appeasing pheromone. Because when it, the dog smells it, it smells its mom. And it is like, oh. So if you have a dog that's anxious, barks a lot, um, noise phobias, uh, interspecies aggression, uh, doesn't travel well, uh, you can buy it online, you can buy it everywhere. It doesn't require a prescription. That's great. And, and also don't forget probiotics. 80% of, I'm going kind of back to a previous question, 80% of a, of a dog's immune system is in its gut and a healthy gut is a healthy body. So there's different ones your veterinarian right, might recommend. Um, so don't hesitate that. I, I go, you know, WebMD is a great source and they have, uh, if you go to WebMD, they have uh, PetMD. So that's one that I like, uh, probably recommend the most. Got it. And, and also one other one, by the way, I should, I almost forgot it. It's a new one called vet scoop, vet scoop.com. Yeah. And for those of you that are tuning in today, remember you're going to get a recording of this. So you can always come back and refer later if you didn't catch all that. And Janet, there's another Janet piping up in the Q and a, we got a lot of Janets here today. Um, and the question is for you, Dr. Becker, is it okay to give your dog the daily Epiquel in their food or directly in their mouth? It's okay to give it in the food. And by, by the way, I want everybody out there to know 
medications we ask you to give sometime, it's hard for us to even give it sometimes. So don't feel embarrassed or guilty if you can't give the medication to your pet. Feel feel uh, confident enough to talk to your veterinarian. So what are what are uh, what else can I do? Because just think about it. That dog knows tomorrow you're going to give it a pill. I swear to God, they know it. Or you're going to trim their nails. I'm going to trim their nails this week. And when I got some help, that dog somehow knows you're going to trim its nails. So what you can do, things like pill pockets help. But uh, also, you can compound the medication. Have a compounding pharmacy. Make it in something that they'll lap up. Mm -hmm. Uh, like we have a, my, my daughter has a dog where baby's sit in a, a puggle and it, the stuff is in a peanut butter flavored tablet. And we're doing horses right now. And theirs is in a molasses flavored liquid and an apple flavored powder uh, that to, to give them the, give them the medication. And by the way, there also is a product called Cytopoint, C-Y-T-O point by the same company as Zoetis. It is an injectable that works like Apoquel that the veterinarian only has to give every several months. So you don't have to give the apple quill at all. Okay. So talking about medicine and as the cat girl in the room, there's a question and I share it. How do you give medicine to a cat pills liquid? I mean, I've tried tuna, by the way, I've tried putting it in tuna water. I mean, what okay. do you. Okay. First of all, I can still remember doing a segment on Martha Stewart showing him something was called, oh, what the heck was it called? One of the problems with pets, by the way, is imagine you take your, like, I'm like my dad used to always say, my dad was in his 80s, he goes, gotta hate taking a handful of pills every day. Or my mother'd say, I always worry I'm gonna choke. And I'm thinking, oh, grow up, you know, toughen up. You grew up on a farm. Now I'm the age where I gotta take a handful of pills and I can't stand the thing of choking. So I wish I hadn't thought those things. But if you think of a dog when they take a pill or a cat, how would you like to take it without any water? And so they've done imaging and it'll get stuck in the, stuck in the throat. So especially, especially this is really hard to do with cats. But for, so it's better with liquid medication. But for a dog, just grab another corner of the mouth and you can use a, a syringe or you can use a turkey baster and just give them a little bit of water after you give them oh. their, their pill. If they'll come back around you, yeah, well, what you do is you use it, you make it something positive. So, you know, you, what you'll do is you'll have like these horses that we have to get them to take that, that molasses flavored liquid, we used applesauce. And so they got used to the, the syringe with the applesauce and they come running for it. And then now all of a sudden we're given something that has a molasses flavor. So what I would recommend is uh, some beef bouillon juice or, or um, you know, chicken broth or, or something like that that you use. Yeah. And tell you cats, the juice from the tuna. Okay, so, so here's the thing for cats. So number one, cats are often the medication ends up you on you or on the ceiling. Yeah. And cats can get really stressed. Like I did, I was going back to this one segment in uh, on Martha Stewart. I was going to do, and I we rehearsed it, and I went to do it live, and the cat took its paw and went wham! It hit this thing out of my hand. And I see it cartwheeling through the air into the audience. And I'm thinking, oh, gosh. That went well. This went really well. I'm showing how to do it. You, you, the, the best, if you, I would ask your veterinarian if there's something they can give that's injectable, number one. Mm -hmm. Num number two, if you can't do that, I would wrap the cat in a towel so just its head is burrito. exposed. Yeah, and a, a burrito, absolutely. Because then, then, And then you can hold it. You grab their in a dog or a cat, you always grab their, um, their at the corner of the jaw, and then you lift the, the mouth up with your finger. Like I can show on cutie pie here, but they, they actually have compounding. Cats don't like, cats don't like um, sweet flavors. So you get something that's like bacon. So when you grab them, you grab them behind their teeth right here and you open their mouth like that. You see, so I got right behind his fang, his fang teeth and they can't bite you. And then I use this to open their mouth up and then I'll put it between my fingers and put it down their throat. Um, easier said than done. Do you, that. If, if, if you can get something that is salty flavored, that's compounded from a, a compounding pharmacy. And here's what they'll do. They have something called tiny tabs. They're tiny, tiny little things. And they'll send you blanks that have like 20 flavors. And you just see if there's one of them your cat will eat. So you, they taste test it before you get the medication in it. 
Well, and there's a question from Facebook coming in about pheromones that calm cats, because that could be another option before you try to give a medicine too, right? Uh, yeah, you yeah. mentioned feel away, and I know that's yeah. one of the cat ones. Yeah, by the way, there's, a, there's another product called Zilkeen, Z-Y-L-K-E-N-E. And Mother Nature, she had two, she had a double punch. One was the pheromones. Second one, there was something in the milk that causes it. They used to think it was when the stomach was distended. You know, like we get after you eat a big meal, you go to Golden Corral and you come back and like, oh, I'm tired. Uh, but it's actually, it's something in the milk, uh, a milk mm -hmm. protein. And so it's, a. Uh, and by the way, it's not, it's not from the female cat's milk or the dog the female dog's milk there's not somebody with little tiny fingers a little tiny dog titties going shh, 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 like a, oh my god i gotta, gotta get enough dog milk here it's actually from cow's milk but zilkeen works well and if you have multiple cats there's a product called feel away multi cat mm. so feel away is the feline cheek pheromone you know when they rub against you yeah. Uh, they're marking furniture. They're marking you that this is like the good housekeeping seal of approval that I've given on this. And they're actually marking a path that they can run. If they're ever threatened, they actually mark their paths like little street signs. Mm -hmm. The feel away multi cat is the feline appeasing pheromone. Same thing, uh, that the mother cat has to calm kittens. That's great. I, we've used that one. We need to totally use that one. Okay. Janet. You mentioned pet therapy at the communities and somebody is typing in here that they want to know what exactly does that entail? What kinds of things do they do with the pets, with the residents? Well, just visits in general. Um, in fact, when River comes to work, there are several of our residents that I know want to see him. And if for some reason my day doesn't lend that I can get by those, I will try to get them on the next round. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing in particular is, um, so we encourage residents to come and live with us through the end of life. So some of our residents go on hospice. I had um, a hospice resident whose family requested that River come by and see her and she had had been in the bed not real reactive but when he came in she just lit up and the family cried actually um just seeing her react to that because she hadn't had a lot of response to anyone so um just the calming effect um we've got groups that play cards and stuff and he will go down there with me and they'll stop what they're doing and pet him but um just the interaction just it just breathes life into the community and i think um he throws off some good vibes and it all comes back to him too because he loves every minute of it and i love that i love the fact that it's like it you both benefit the pets benefit and we benefit right it's not just one side okay we have another question phil asks I'm really interested in bringing in a new family member to our home that would also be welcomed at Brookdale. So knowing what breed, the breeds are hard to determine. Are there any predominant breeds to steer clear from? Well, can I tell you the breeds? Somebody was going to go, Dr. Becker, I don't like you because everybody loves That's some the breed of my dog. Everybody loves some breed. So you got to be careful. And by the way, if anybody brags about their kids or grandkids or great grandkids, everybody's like, so what? I mean, there's always a little jealousy. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. If the one good thing about pets is nobody feels that way. You could talk about your pet and it's not like my I'm competing with my brother, you know, over his kids. The, the ones that come on the appointment book and you look and it says, it, it says um, uh, Chesapeake or chow it's like uh listen i got an emergency at home i've got to go i'm sorry uh they're really bad about biting cocker spaniels are really bad about biting part of it is is inbreeding and part of it is just temperament the the one that veterinarians never fear are pit bulls they oh. here, here's the thing that happens if you look at the dog bite data from state farm and stuff anytime a pit bull bites somebody 
it ends up in the news. Any, do you ever hear about a Labrador retriever biting somebody or a chihuahua? I mean, <laughs> no. it's those little ankle biters are the ones that bite most of the time. And trust me, it, it hurts if you, you know, somebody, uh, veterinary medicine is probably the only profession that has a 100% injury rate of everybody that works there every year. You never hear chihuahua, uh, chihuahua bites kid and ends up in the hospital. <laughs> never. So pit bulls are like, uh, love pit bulls. The one thing going back to about safety issues is I would make sure that you uh, bathe the dogs. That's the number one thing is really deep bathe them before they come in. And whether that's MRSA or anything else that takes care of it. And there's a product called Zoom Groom made by the Kong company. You don't know the, the Kong is everybody knows the shape of a Kong toy. It's like the shape of a Coke bottle. Yeah. They make a product called Zoom Groom it has little rubber fingers. And it's really good about getting the shampoo down to the level of the skin. That's good to know. Uh, we have another question similar, but about cats. Are there certain cat breeds that are better for seniors? You know, I... I don't know. There's, there's really not a cat breed that scares anybody. I know the one thing, the Maine Coon cats are the feline equivalent of a golden retriever, a Labrador retriever. They are so sweet. And the other thing are ginger cats. I uh, gosh, uh, you, you just never see an aggressive orange cat. My son has one. I'm telling you, I've seen I, so many different things of a litter of kittens. And so I get to see several from the same litter. And if there's one that was a favorite, it's the ginger cat. Oh, that's good to know. I have a Russian blue who's quite sweet. Everyone loves what they love, right? You love they your do. baby. They do. Okay, here's another question. I've always let a new dog sniff me, sniff me and lick my hand before I pet it. Is that wrong? That's what I've always been told. Well, you don't want to stick your hand out. If, if you, and the other thing I teach just to people, you know, everybody, you go through drive through now, you know, Starbucks has a puppuccino and most drive throughs I go through have some kind of treat for the pets and the UPS and FedEx people have treats that are up here. Our dogs used to be so territorial when we lived in Southern Idaho, down in potato country of UPS and FedEx. Here's some stranger walking up to our front door, you know, <laughs> well, guess what? We figured out through this is when they have treats, now the dogs are like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, here they come. Our dogs know the sound of the trucks that come up. We live a mile off the highway and sit there and greet them. Their tails wagons the hardest lifting alternate back feet off of the ground. Uh, but what, what you want to do is you, once you, what I teach people to do is to put the treat in their hand like this. When you give a treat like this in your fingers, you know, you're holding it like this. They, they don't see very well up dogs see well down. They see well to the side. They don't see very well up. And so they really can't see and they'll misjudge and they'll bite your fingers. If you hold a treat out flat in your hand, 100% guarantee you'll never get bitten. Never. Um, the guy down here at the local recycling center, he's a really good guy. Cecil always has treats. He'd get nipped. And I told him that and just the other day. He was telling me, guys, Marty, I haven't been bit nipped in three years. Thank you for giving me that tip. An insider secret from a vet. The insider Automatic secret for the vet. Just like flat out like you got a little plate you know, for him to lick it off there. But then once they're, if you're turned sideways and the dog comes over to you, then you can let it sniff the back of your hand. It can be in a closed fist, sniff the back of your hand. Yeah. And, uh, and you'll tell by body language. If it don't force it, a lot of us that love pets want to force it. Um, and uh, that's when something feels yeah. cornered. And by the way, if you love cats and somebody has a cat in the room or you go to somebody's place, if you love cats and want the cat to come to you, completely ignore it and act like you do not like cats and the cat will come to you. That is it's so true. Invariably, the people that love cats are staring at it and they're like, I ain't going over there. And the people that, that ignore it, that's the ones they go to. Or the people that don't like cats. They do. Every and the cat, time. Like my brother, yep. my poor brother. Yep. Oh, here's a great question. We talked about puppies. And Janet, how old is River, by the way? Five. He's five, so he's past puppy. But yes. at what age will my puppy start calming down and stop being so crazy? 
So he's about 30, by the way, if we're figuring out that farm. River's yeah, 30, yeah. so he's River's good 30. and calm. He's 30. He's already, he's, <laughs> he doesn't borrow the car and bring it back empty anymore. Right. You know, no more college bills. This is awesome. So, so really a dog, uh, dog the, the, other, the other problem, health problem you see with dogs is 66% of America's dogs are overweight or obese. Same as the number of humans that are overweight or obese. So that's the other big thing is to keep them at or near their ideal body weight, which is typically what they weigh about a year of age. So a smaller dogs like a Chihuahua are fully grown, uh, reach a full adult size, sexually mature around 10 months. The, the bigger the dog, it takes longer, a little longer than a year. So golden retriever, maybe 14 months. If you have a mastiffs or big dogs like that, uh, great Danes, it can be 18 months, but it really takes it. One of the things we used to recommend all the time was early spay neuter. When you had them at four months, the rabies shot, you got them spayed or neutered. And we had a whole list of reasons why it's less expensive. It's easy to do the surgery. Bob Barker did a great job on uh, the prices right of telling them spray and neuter your pets. Um, and we, you know, when a pet well population and, and it would prevent prostate cancer, mammary cancer, testicular cancer. Well, guess what we know now? Those cancers were rare and easy to fix. You can remove the testicles. You can remove the, the mammary glands. What we're seeing is it caused a lot of damage to the joints, a lot more joint issues with dogs than we used to have. And also oh. an increase in three bad cancers, hemangiosarcoma, lymphosarcoma, and osteosarcoma. So now we recommend uh, waiting until probably around two years of age. Really? And, and don't be, don't feel like you even need to do it. Like most countries, I've been in 89 countries, most countries outside of North America, most of the pets are not spayed and neutered. So it's, that's a North American thing. And no, they don't get in fights. Uh, you think, oh God, they're going to be territorial. Um, anybody that's been to, uh, you know, a first world country in Europe sees pets passing each other all the time, interacting, playing at the dog park, just the way it is. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating. That's good news. All right. So River hasn't barked a lot while he's been there. He doesn't seem like he's very barky at stuff. River's he's, asleep. He's oh, been working today. <laughs> he's sleeping sad. on the job. He's 30. He's sleeping. It's the afternoon. <gasps> so we have a question about somebody is saying, are there any tips on how to get my dog to stop barking at everything? Is there something that I'm doing or not doing that's making that a problem? Well, I would go to fearfreehappyhomes.com. It is complimentary. There's no charge for it. And there's some great resources on there. Most of the time, you like you heard my dogs barking a little bit ago, right? The three, I call them the 18 pound doorbells. But uh, what I what we have trained them to do is to bark when when somebody's around and then to stop barking. Mm. So there's things you can do to train them to be rewarded for being quiet. Absolutely, do not use a bark collar, shock collars with shock or citronella. Um, there's some really simple, surefire ways to get them to decrease their barking. That's good to know. I know that seems to be everyone's like, go get the shot collar. No, and some some want citronella. Absolutely not. What? But I tell you what, the dog, especially some breeds, are yappy. Like I used to have a schnauzer, and and my mom had a schnauzer. My sister had a schnauzer. Everybody hates a schnauzer unless you have a schnauzer. They are really yappy, and it tends to be the smaller dogs. And most of the time, they're territorial. You know, somebody is coming up to the house. Somebody is coming up to the car where they're territorial. If you ever have visitors, you have somebody coming to visit you, have, take your dog outside and have them meet you on neutral ground. Have them meet you outside on the sidewalk. Have them meet you in the street where their car is. Um, have them meet you at, you know, someplace close by and walk back to your house. Don't, that's, how you, that's how you take away that territorialism. That's great. That's great. We, we've got, I'm going to sneak in one more question because we have somebody who's asking if you have any recommendations on types of food puzzles or dispensing devices, because there's so many out there is something people should look for. What, what I recommend, uh, Kong, K-O-N-G has a Kong wobbler. 
it's like those weeble wobbles we used to have, you know, as the kids that got sand on the bottom, you punch them and they come back up. There's another one from Kong called the Kong Genius. And that's the good one about that is a dog gets smarter, you can link them together. Nina Otteson, and I can't remember how to spell it. Somebody will have to put it in the chat. Nina, I think it's N-I-N-N-A, Otteson, like Mm O-T-T-E-S-S-O-N. They make an entire line of food puzzles that are by, they have like a simple one's number one. It goes clear up to number four, I believe. And one of my favorites is called the Green Interactive Feeder. G-R-E-E-N, Green Interactive Dog Feeder. It looks like the Jolly Green Giant went golfing and knocked a big golf divot out. (laughs) It it has plastic fins of grass that are different heights and different angles. So you put the food in there and the the pet has to use its tongue to work it out of this puzzle. That's great. Well, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Thank you, Dr. Becker and Janet and Cutie Pie and River for joining us today. And thanks to all, and his cutie pie had to like, you know, be manipulated. River got to sleep. But <laughs> thanks to all of you also who tuned in for asking your questions. We're going to be emailing you a recording and a transcript of this webinar. So you'll be able to view it again, share it with your family and friends. You have the information as well on how to follow Dr. Becker, find out more about those fear-free programs. So thank you so much. And oh, there's River. Oh, look at that sleepy baby. River, wake up. This is your cameo. Hey, Janet, by the way, I still have an AOL address and I love AOL at this age because I get uh, ads for constipation products and walk-in tubs. It's the bomb. AOL. (laughs) On that note, please (laughs) join us for our next webinar next month on Blue Zones, The Secret to Longevity. Did you know that in parts of the world, people live far longer than the rest of us? What are their secrets? Well, there is this concept called Blue Zones. In our next webinar, we're going to dive into it with speaker Nick Butner, program director of the Blue Zones Project, to see what we've learned from these areas and how we might adopt some of their habits. That's going to be on Wednesday, September 22nd at 3 p.m. All of our webinars feature a different subject each month. You can go to brookdale.com slash in the know to discover more about upcoming ones and see all the ones from the past. So thank you guys so much. This has been a lot of fun. And until next time, we hope you stay safe, happy, and well. Thank you so much.